Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. I have been solving math problems for GRE out of this book here, practicing to take the GRE general test, the 10th edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase it immediately. One needs it in order to practice for the exam. The problem that I'm about to solve is the one that you're going to find on page number 227 in that book. The tag that I use is GRE-10E, 10E for the 10th edition, dash page 227, quantitative comparison question, QC stands for quantitative comparison, number 5. Let's take a look at it. Let's, let's see what we are given. It says, so I'm going to read it to you first, so you have to have the book in front of you so that you can follow my work. Turn to page number 227. Open the book, turn to page 227 and read the problem with me. Number number 5. A decrease in the number of sales personnel in company K to 85% of the regional sales personnel resulted in the decrease of 500 in the number of monthly sales. Alright, okay, so far. So we are told that their personnel, whatever the personnel level was before, it has gone down, it has gone down to 85%. If they, had, if they had 100 sales people in the store, now they have only 85 sales people. And then we are told that as a result of that, their sales went down by 500 units. Whatever it is that they're selling, uh, they, they saw a drop of 500 in the, in, the, in the unit of sales, in the monthly sales. We are asked to compare in column A, percentage decrease, percentage decrease in the number of companies' monthly sales. Per percentage decrease in sales versus the percentage decrease in the number of company case sales personnel. Okay. Percentage decrease in personnel. Well, percentage decrease in the personnel is very straightforward because we are just uh, we were just told that uh, that uh, decrease in the number of sales personnel and company K to 85%. Well, if, they, if, if, if it decreases to 85% of the original level, the decrease must have been 15%. So that is very straightforward. The, this quantity, quantity in column B is just 15. Let's figure out what this is. A percentage drop in the sales is a tricky thing to do here because all we are told is that their sales drop by 500 units every month. I cannot tell you what the percentage decrease was in the sale until I know the original level of sales. In order to figure out the percentage decrease, not only I need to know what the change was in the sales, but I also need to know the original sales. For example, if I come up to you and tell you that the price of, uh, price of this marker went down by $7, what was the percentage decrease in the price of these markers? The answer to that question would be, how the hell do I know? You haven't told me the original price. I have to have the original price, the original level, the base value, the original value, the starting point in order to figure out the percentage change, which is what, which is, what is missing from this problem. They do not tell you what their original sales were. All they tell you is that their sales dropped by 500. There is not enough to figure out this quantity, the percentage decrease in the sales. This quantity is one black box. It's an unknown quantity. So basically, we are being asked to compare an unknown quantity with 15. It cannot be done. The percentage, percentage decrease in the sales may be 15%, it may be less than 15%, it may be more than 15%, who knows? All we know is that the sales dropped by 500. If the original sales were 1000 and it drops by 500, well, so that's, that's, that's a drop of 50%, in which case the column A would be bigger. But if the original sales were 500, uh, drops by 500, if the original sales were 5 million and it drops by 500, that's a pretty minuscule drop in, the percentage, in terms of percentage. So we do not know what's going on here. We, do, we cannot tell which quantity is bigger. The answer is D. The answer is D. It cannot be tell, it cannot be told, it cannot be ascertained based on the information that is given to, given to us. That's it. Answer is D. Let's move on to number 6. Let me look at the clock in the back, see how much time I have consumed so far. Let 
we are five minutes into the clip, which means I do not have much time. The number six has to do with comparing comparing fractions. I'm going to quickly give you some examples here, three examples, and then I'll do the problems. Say, for example, if I ask you which one is bigger, three quarter or five eight. Of course, this is a very simple example because, as you can see, three quarter is is 75 and this is less than 75 which would have to be 60 but let's just pretend that we do not know the one way the proper way the correct way the classical way the traditional way the orthodox way would be to find a common denominator common I'm going to, I'm going to keep it very simple let's, let's do it like this multiply multiply this this part this side by 8 and multiply this side by 4 so if I multiply the bottom by 8 top becomes 24 if I multiply bottom by 4 this becomes 4 times 5 and basically what I'm essentially doing is what I'm essentially doing is let's make this it make this 24 as 3 times 8 what we are essentially doing is what we are essentially doing are is that we are, we are multiplying this 8 by 3 which is this part right here and then we're multiplying this 4 by 5 which is this part right here and comparing this quantity 4 times 5 versus 3 times 8 because the bottom plays no role bottom is same it's the same denominator of course it's the same denominator because that was the point of it we were, we, hence it's called hence hence the use of the term common denominator of course the common denominator which means there is the same denominator so if you want to compare fractions this is how you do it just multiply this denominator by this numerator and since the arrow is going this way it follows here Multiply the denominator of the first one to the numerator of the second one and that quantity goes here. Let's do one more problem. You'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. So do not want to run out of time here. 6 over 7 versus 7 over 8. Again, the quick way, instead of, instead of uh, going through the common denominator and so forth, is to multiply 6 times 8, which is 48, and then go... 7 times 7, which is 49, and therefore this guy wins. Let's do one more. 3 7 versus, versus 4 9. Which one is bigger? Well, let's see. 3 times 9 times 3 is 27. 27 goes here because the arrow goes this way. And 7 times 4 is 28. Again, this guy wins. This fraction is bigger. That's the quick way of figuring out which fraction is bigger when you are asked to compare the fractions. Now let's do the problem. I need to raise this thing because I need the room. I'm going to again quickly run to the back of the camera and see how much time I have. I'm always paranoid that I'm going to go over 10 minutes because YouTube does not like that when that happens. Let's take a look at it here. We are asked to compare 1 minus 1 over 7 versus 1 minus 1 over 8. Well, very first thing you have to realize is that if I ask you to compare 3 plus 5 versus 3 plus 7, and if you sit there and go 3 plus 5 is 8 and 3 plus 7 is uh, 10, and then tell me that 10 is bigger than 8, you miss the bloody point of it. These questions are called quantitative comparison. Hence, the emphasis on the comparison. You see, I wrote down the word competition. I crossed it out and I wrote down comparison. We are asked to compare the two things, not compute the bloody things. So if you sat there and said 8 is more than 10, you missed the point. The point here was this. The point is, since 3 appears in both columns, since 3 appears here and here, it plays no role. We are supposed to compare the 5 and the 7. The same thing here. This 1 plays no role. So basically what we are asked to compare is negative 7, negative 1 7 versus negative 1 8 negative one seventh versus negative one eighth and then we use the same technique that we just learned here multiply it here negative one times eight would be negative eight and negative se uh, positive seven times negative one would be negative seven negative seven is bigger than negative eight the answer is b voila that's it that's what it is that's how you do it i hope you found it helpful if you wish to work with me on a on a face to face basis on a personal private tutoring, if if you require personal private tutoring, face to face tutoring, uh, or if you wish to purchase a solution manual to these questions, please go to my website at www.prep.prep.for4gre.com and send me an email.
All right. Thanks.